It takes time to get it right Sleepless days and nights We just need a little more Just a little time For you and I So stay a bit longer Hey beautiful people, this is Carrie Cavalli. Thank you so much for joining in for today's conversation. I am the writer, blogger, vlogger, speaker behind CarrieCavalli.com. If you already are a friend of mine, I am thanking you a million and one times for joining in for today's conversation. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I invite you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and um, so you can get notifications on when I upload something new. And if you are listening to this on my podcast, because I am doing two at one, I'm doing a video and I have, um, I'm doing an audio recording. I want to say, you know, if Subscribe to my podcast. Uh, give me some likes. Give me some comments and all of that. Show some love. I am looking to build a community of stay-at-home moms who are uplifting one another and who are just really there for one another. And so I want to build all of my social platforms, whether it be on YouTube, on iTunes, if you're listening to this on any other streaming site like um, Spotify or something like that, whatever way you're listening to this, I want you all, beautiful women, to be able to speak to each other and encourage each other in the comment section some way, somehow. So yeah, um, let's just go ahead and dig right into this. I'm so excited for this conversation. Um, as you can tell from the title, this title is something that might be a little controversial for some. This might be something that might feel like you might not want to talk about it, but I think we should talk about it, so I'm going to. And so what is this in regards to? I, didn't, I don't want to drag this out any longer than it already is, right? Then this this topic for today is in regards to spiritual warfare and the mental attack that the enemy specializes for the stay at home mom. And um, as many of you already know, this is a faith based Christian platform. So we talk about Jesus. We talk about the one and only true living God. And we talk about the Bible here. Um, of course, I welcome anyone who can relate to the tips, tricks, hacks, experiences, testimonies that are shared on this platform to come and pull up a table uh, chair at the table. But, you know, this is what we talk about. This is how we present it and we wrap it all up in faith and grace. And so in regards to this situation, this topic, a lot of people might not want to talk about this because they might feel like it brings that into their life or maybe they feel like this doesn't um, exist, but it does. And I think we should talk about it. So what brings me to talk about this today is the fact that on one of my videos, and I'm not going to, well, I can, I, I guess I can specify which one, one of my videos, it's getting a lot of, it's, it's just constantly getting a lot of traction. It's just a video that constantly gets views and um, I, it's the one video that gets the most comments and the comments are always so i wish i could hug every mom that comments on these on on this video and so the title of this video is called overcoming feeling overwhelmed and stressed as a stay-at-home mom it's got 3477 views so far i posted it in 2018 and it it continues to um, get comments and I'm telling you when I read these comments from these moms like literally the majority there these women are really going through it and I, I hope that when they stop and write these comments that they look from left to right and up and down and see that they are not alone 
they are not alone. I can relate to a lot of these women. I can feel their pain and their hurt. They are leaving paragraphs, literally paragraphs in these comments, just pouring out their heart to me. And it's like, I if you go, sometimes you'll see some of my comments back or really in depth, but I can't do it for every single person. And it just, right now I'm getting a little emotional because it's like, girl, I feel you. Like I'm reading these comments and I feel you. For example, and I won't say their names just because out loud are the titles of their um, channels because I don't know if they, for anonymity purposes, I want them to be able to have their privacy. Um, I'm, you know, you could te technically look them up by what I'm saying, but hopefully, you know, doesn't go any further than that. So let's see. There is a comment here. No babysitter or me time. Fun in or fun in four years and pregnant with my second child. I feel burned out from serving cleaning and driving kids to school so alone, no friends, happy for new baby, but so miserable. And I breastfeed, which means no way can I leave to have a little relaxing fun. I have five children and today I'm searching videos like this. Sad crying face. I love my baby so much, but I am super overwhelmed right now with my life. My back hurts so much, and I still clean and cook and make sure my baby is clean and fed and entertained, not by putting my kid in front of a TV, but to take her to the park and spend quality time with my baby. And I still have work tomorrow. I don't know how mommies of two babies or more can do it, but I bow down to you strong women or single fathers. Being a mom is hard, but we are doing it day by day. Sometimes we don't get no support or we don't have friends or family to lean on but gosh darn it <laughs> I'm definitely changing up those words but gosh darn it we are doing it a mom's job is an unconditional one where we don't ask nothing in return and ask to get some kind of compensation but just the love of our children tomorrow will be a new day you can tell that she was pouring that out from her heart and I love how she ended that entire thing with just being so positive at the end. I am thankful for my children. I believe that so many women feel neglected and not appreciated by their spouses and loved ones. That's the discouraging part and makes you question if you should have even started a family. Well, for me, so early, but God says, obviously, yes, that's a part of my purpose. I literally could read all of these comments and I could cry because it's like back to back. Everything is just repeated, but in different ways, given in different packages from these different women. They have no clue who each other are. They're all around the world, different races, different faces, different sizes of families, different situations. Some moms are working. Some moms are at home full time. Some or single or newly single and still their cry is the same and I just know that if you're watching this and you are one of the lovely women who have took the time to pour your heart out in that in the, that comment section or any type of comment section on my channel just know that I include you in my prayers that you guys get through what you are going through that God get gets you through it and gives you the strength and protects you and your family and keeps your mind protected and that your spouse who is to be your partner, your teammate is able to be equally yoked with you. And that's something that I will touch on in a moment. So just know that I am so grateful that you took the time and humbled yourself enough to leave that comment. Because I know that a lot of people might not be able to do that regardless of pride or maybe it's because they don't want to be put out on front street. But at the same time, you have no idea whose life you are making an impact on because there's another woman who might not have left a comment, but she clicked on that video for a reason and was reading the comments and she needed to see that she wasn't alone. <sighs> okay, so I want to 
keep this video going as and keep it yeah keep it going smoothly here I was about to add something on but let's get into this before I'm gonna write this note down so that we can talk about that after I give you guys uh, some topic um, some touches on the topic Okay, so I see that a lot of moms out here are struggling with not having a sitter, not being able to afford one, not knowing people to trust to watch their kids, not having any surrounding family or friends. Um, maybe some are having unsupportive husbands. Um, so a lot of people are feeling lonely, isolation. Um, they might come from larger families with like more than one child. And some women have just one child. And... Um, I see that a lot of these women love their children and they know their purpose for staying at home, but they are suffering from some kind of anxiety or depression, feeling um, resentful um, of their spouse being able to get out the house and work and make an income and, you know, and also feeling forgot forgotten. And we've talked about this in multiple videos on my channel in that specific video. And I actually do have another video coming out soon on depression again. And like I said on my previous video that I just um, released about um, stockpiling and the inflation and all of that, um, I do mention that I, I, I write, I'm, I write, I speak, I make videos on motherhood, stay-at-home motherhood, depression a lot. And I know that can be like, might be redundant to the outside, the person looking from the outside in, but that if it's redundant to you. And you see that that's like a common topic that we talk about here on this platform. Maybe that message is not for you, but that message is specifically for the woman who needs the encouragement in knowing she is not alone and how can she overcome it. So let's get into it. Spiritual warfare. Hmm. Ephesians 6, 12. Let's start off with that. And I know the, a lot of these scriptures, if you are you know, familiar with scripture and all of that, then some of these things you've probably heard before. But it's Ephesians 6, 12 states, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What we're going through is not what we always see. The enemy uses our minds to thwart us from our purpose on this earth. It is the main way he attacks us through our minds. So have you ever heard of mind over matter? Um, when I was in growing up in a military family, um, I you know, aspire to be in the military one day. I didn't go that route and I wish I did because um, I think I was meant to do it. I just got cold feet last last minute and I did about four, four years of ROTC, which is the junior reserves officer in training corps in high school. And I went to boot camp and everything out of state and it was really fun. And one of the things that they always taught us was that you have to control your mind. So when we were doing PT testing, physical training testing, and we had to test our agility and our running and, our, you know, we had to hit different scores to be able to, you know, like qualify um, to pass our physical tests and stuff based on our BMI or body mass index and our height and our weight and our age. Um, it was always mind over matter. So when you felt like you were tired, when you were running or doing crunches or sit-ups, like, it doesn't matter how you feel. If you put it in your mind, this isn't that hard, or I just need five more, or you know what I'm saying? Like, it was always a mental thing. That's what we were trained as. And so that's for a lot of things, and it can be applied for a lot of things. But if it's mind over matter, and I know you've heard sayings, memes, seeing memes, things where people say, oh, it just takes one negative thought to ruin your day if you allow it. It's literally your mindset. And we have to reframe that mindset. And we have to be aware that when we have thoughts that are dark, that are almost like you don't want to share it with someone because they're going to be like, what is going on with you? Like, 
Why are you thinking these? Thoughts that are not of God, thoughts of shame, guilt, um, anger, anxiety, depression, isolation, telling you that you're not smart enough, telling you that you're not strong enough, reminding you of the mistakes of your past. Those are not of God. And that's a way to paralyze you physically. Because what are you doing when you are in that mindset? You're not being motivated to work out. You're not sitting there like feeling good about yourself. You're probably laying in bed and, and not getting up out of bed. Or probably sitting on the couch and just randomly getting in a bad mood and taking it out on your husband <laughs> um, subconsciously. Or just stayed in the house all day and not really paying attention to your kids because you're just feeling so low in your mind. And we're really talking about this. So if someone's, I know this conversation might be like, oh, really? Some people are doing that? And I know there's going to be some pop, some people that are probably going to hear this and be like, I don't sit on the couch all day and feel sad and ignore my child because I'm feeling low. Like, that's a terrible mother. This is not the platform for you because on this platform, we are real, we are raw, and we are truthful because the Bible is the truth and there is nothing that can be hidden. All things in the dark will come to light. And one of my Biggest things is we are not going to fake it here. You can fake it to make it somewhere else, but we will not do it here. I don't do small talk. I don't pretend because we are all the same. It doesn't matter how much money you make or where your background comes from or it does not matter. We all we all poop and do number two in the bathroom. I'm sorry. We will all pass one day. We will all pass. We will all be buried and we will all have to answer to God. Okay, so I am not here. I know poop. I know you're probably thinking, but that it's literal. Like we literally all have, like we're all like humble yourselves and let's not judge another person. Because what one person does that we can't imagine them going through or that they do, like you never know where you'll find yourself. There's so many times where women will judge another person, but it's not, they're not in that season yet. When, you know, a younger woman goes to an older woman's house and sees it's messy because there's just so many toys and it's like a mess in the house because, and, and you would think to yourself, once one might think to themselves, it's a mess in here. What's that weird smell? Like this woman has these kids, but she is not keeping up. Like I would never, if I had all these kids, I would be so organized. Everything would be on a schedule. Everything would be just so. And then watch one day when that younger person or that inexperienced person, it doesn't even have to be age because it just could be where they're at in life, gets in that situation where they have more than one kid or even just one kid, but, and their house is just torn upside down. And they start to understand, oh, okay, when I clean and I turn my back and I come back and it's a mess, that's a thing, you know? So let's not judge one another here because, oops. let's not judge one another here because as we are familiar, if you're not familiar in the Bible, the Pharisees definitely judged, judged God, uh, Jesus, and he was like, my message is not for you. I came here to heal the sick. And those who can hear what I'm saying and understand what I'm saying, that's the message for them. So let's go ahead and move forward. Sorry about that. My husband just called me and I'm like, I got to call him back. Um, yeah. We wrestle against, uh, so it says our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, the dark world. I know some people are probably going to think the dark world doesn't exist. It's all a conspiracy. It is true. It is there. It is real. I could go on a tangent, but that's for another video. What I will say is more than ever. If you are not watching the media, if you are not watching TV, movies, music, oh my lord, the enemy, the devil, the enemy is so blatant. He is just 
out there. Like he was just like, I'm out there. You're going to see me. You're going to accept me. You might even love me. I'm going to make you love me. For example, little Nas X video, music video. If you are not a familiar, uh, and I don't listen to any of that music. There's maybe one or two music songs that I'll hear from like just being on the internet from time to time. And I'll hear and I'll be like, oh, that's catchy. But then I see who it is. I'm like, nope, 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 nope. I do not. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. We do not listen to that here. I do not intake any rap or secular music. Now, if I had the babysitter for the night, I might jug to some old 2000s music just for a little treat, just for a little bit of for a little bit of time, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 1 hour just because it's nostalgic, but even then, I won't listen to some of the stuff I used to listen to. If like I filter everything out. It's what you see, what you hear, what you listen to, what you ingest. It's your diet overall. It's not just what you eat and drink. It's about what is going into your temple through the doors and the the pathways of your eyes, nose, ear, all of that. We can talk for days. Little Nas X is I, I guess I, I I don't even know if it's little. I think it's Lil. I don't know. He's a rapper, I don't know, and he had a music video with the devil, <laughs> like dressed the devil. It's terrible. Literally repulsive. Repulsive. And it is something that is out there for people to watch. And people are really enjoying his music and they, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, oh Lord, like. The veil is literally over their eyes. So, and that's a Bible scripture. Having the veil over your eyes. You got to get those scales off. You know what I'm saying? And the only way is to give your life to God, to Jesus. Um, there's just so much out there. And it's getting worse. It's getting weird. Um, it's getting blatant. Um, if you don't see the symbolism out there. If you don't see what people are talking about and doing. You know, Cardi B and Mag the Stallion, I'm sorry, you know, but these music videos with like horns, why is there this fixation of like horns, demonic horns, snakes, demonic snakes, like they just have to have snakes in these things. There has to be dead, gore, death, like no one's singing about love anymore unless you're in a different genre. So there's a lot, you know, he's just an attention he loves attention. The enemy loves attention. So it's like if you don't believe in Jesus as much as you'd like to, or maybe you don't live for him as much as you'd like to, definitely pay attention to the secular music that you may be listening to, what they're saying, what's in the music videos, what what's in the media, what's in the movies and TV shows that you're watching, because it is getting demonic. <laughs> it is getting demonic. Let's see. So your mind is definitely the place that he, the, the enemy can um, and will uh, attack you in because it literally, your mind is literally the central, like the, the central nervous system, right? It literally is the hub. Your brain is literally the hub and you've got like, you know, your nerves and your cords and your autonomic uh, system, somatic, peripheral system going down your spine, down your legs, out your arms, and you do not move unless there are nerve signals coming from your mind, coming and going. And you know what I'm saying? You do not move. So you literally, your brain is what helps you to move your arms, to get up, to praise God, to speak. So your mind is definitely the hub. <laughs> if you wanted to attack anyone, attack them in the core, at the core of where the operations begin. Right? Your mind. I'm going to put these um, scriptures in the um, comment section. Um, and in the show notes too, so, or in the description box on YouTube and in the show notes. So 
You can look those up. You got to pray and worship even when it's tough. You got to pray and worship when it's tough. So in a time when you're in a desperate situation, you just feel like you can't. You, that's like the most time you've got to like literally pray and worship. I know one of my things is you got to get up. You got to get moving. Maybe get out the house. Like literally get out the house. Every time I start feeling like that really cloudy thoughts in my mind, I'll pack up the kids and go for a ride. And I literally feel 10 times better. But you got to be praying. It's easy to praise God and give blessings. And oh, God is so good when everything is going so nice and sweet at home. When you've got a new baby, when you got a new home, when you got a new car, when you got a little extra money in the bank, when nothing bad has happened. But it's when our hardest times, when we are feeling low, when we are feeling lost and forgotten, when we are sick, when we are hurt and our brain can be sick. So when we're mentally sick, physically sick, that's when we call out on God. And we praise him. Not only God, can you help me? Not only God, can you save me? Can you heal me? But also praise you, Lord, Father God. I will give thanks for all that you have given me. Thank you for me to be alive. Thank you for my children. Thank you for my home that I live in. Even if it's small, even if it's whatever, give thanks. Because there's someone else who would love to have your situation. Thank you for my husband. I love him. Thank you, you know, even if your marriage is hurting. Or it needs some areas to, you know, be thankful and give thanks. And then I know it's hard at times when you're going through it, but put that praise and worship music on. I've got some really good songs that really bring me to tears every single time. I will put them in the description box and play, and just play it. And even when it's playing, just let it play because the enemy hates, sorry to use that word, but he despises praise and music song playing in your home, blessing your home. He despises it. And it's like Clorox in a really disgusting bacteria-filled like environment. <laughs> Play it in your home. And that music will soak into your spirit. And even if you don't know the words, put the captions on. Put the captions on. Pull up the lyrics on your phone. Put the captions on if you're playing it on your TV. And sing along with the captions. And as you move your mouth to the words, you're saying and speaking it into existence. Because as God spoke life into the earth, spoke light, spoke spirit into Adam, you speaking is. We all know what you say can become. There is power in the tongue. Just say, praise God, sing his words. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, he chases me down, fights till I'm found, lives the 99. I don't deserve it. I couldn't earn it. Still, he gave his life for me. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. You see, I can't sing like that, but I'm going to sing and I'm going to give praise because God don't need you. He does not expect you to sound just like, like a celebrity or a famous singer. He just wants to hear you give him praise. I promise you. Oof, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So you're speaking it, you're singing it, you've got it going around, and eventually the environment will shift your body, your mind. There is a mental attack coming on, going on with everyone. Know that you are not alone. Everyone is mentally attacked time and time again. If you do not believe it, go on YouTube. YouTube is my favorite, favorite, favorite platform. I feel guilty because I watch everything on YouTube more than I actually post and I need to but I see the stories of people who literally just go crazy just go crazy they hurt themselves they hurt their family members they hurt their best friend they hurt strangers because of this going awry 
We've got celebrities. If it helps for you to understand, like look up your favorite celebrity and 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 then right next to it, in depression or anxiety, you will find something about anyone speaking a little bit about how they suffered or battled with a depression or anxiety at one point. Or another. Depression and anxiety don't come from God, and we'll touch on that in a second. Let's see. Ephesians 6.11. So, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. So, we'll do another video on the full armor of God. I have a wonderful, wonderful book to recommend to you. And, of course, if you're not familiar with it, it's literally the chest plate, the girdle, the arms, the shield, the boots. And one of the most important parts to me would be your head, your helmet. Your head, literally, when you're at a construction site, if you do not have your helmet, you are a walking hazard. You are liable and vulnerable. And just any one thing that hits your head, you're done, right? Your helmet is very important. Put on the helmet, the full armor of God. Be mindful of your helmet because this mental attack is real, okay? That's Ephesians 6, 11. We've got... 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 5. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have defi divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Why would you be having to take captive every thought to make it obedient to God? You're literally having a thought that goes through your mind and you're literally taking it captive. What is captive? Like imagine someone literally trying to like believe. You take it and you're holding it and you make it obedient to God, to Christ. That's an action. Like, that's an action verb. That is not something passive. That is not something, I don't, I, I, that is not something automatic. Taking captive, you literally have to go out there and do some work of every thought to make it obedient, to listen to Christ. So that means they, they already knew writing that that it wasn't going to be automatic. You had to work to get your mind right. Let's see. First Peter. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Your adversary, like he's not your friend. He's your enemy. So be sober-minded, be so uh, watchful. So basically your head, you know, we're talking about this central, this 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 hub right here. Be watchful. You got to be looking around. You got to be, you know, saying on guard. And sometimes you're not always going to be on guard. Sometimes you're going to be living life and then boom, a thought happens. Or, you know, sometimes you don't even recognize like, oh, I'm in a bad mood because like you just be in a bad mood or you just be thinking because it's literally a thought. It's not like someone punches in your arm, at you in the arm. It's not like someone's look, like walking around you with like a hoodie and like looking really suspicious. It's literally a thought, an invisible thing happening within you. So you got to be watchful. You got to be careful. See how you're feeling. Be, mi be mindful of how you're feeling, what the environment is. Maybe your triggers. And we'll talk about triggers because triggers are very important. And it says be sober-minded. And we will talk about being a sober mind because in this day and age, cannabis, THC, marijuana, it's out there. Wine and alcohol is there. And um, there's a balance of things. And I, I'm not going to sit here and say don't smoke or take in THC at all because it does have medicinal purposes and you know it is allowed you know um lawfully in certain states so if I'm if you have a medical situation and sometimes it is to relieve stress sometimes it is to relieve anxiety sometimes it is a back pain body pain whatever um 
then it is what it is. It's okay to drink wine from time to time, in my opinion, because, you know, in the Bible, they were drinking wine. You can have, but it also says multiple times, especially in Proverbs, not to be drunk, to have, be sober-minded and saying here, be sober-minded because when you are not sober in any kind of way, whether it's drugs, um, prescription medication, um, alcohol, you are not thinking straight and you will do, you are more susceptible to being persuaded by the enemy because the enemy is always working and lurking. And I know all of that is like really controversial to talk about. And I am not a pastor, so I can't really go too far deep on that. This platform is just my my opinion. Um, so uh, I, I kind of just, I feel like that conversation will happen one day as far as my take on it. But I don't want to touch on something so controversial so early in the stage of me sharing with you guys. Um, and I know some people are like, no, she's wrong. But that's what I'm saying. Like, we'll talk about that in another time. But you got to be sober minded. You got to be watchful. Let's see. So 2 Corinthians 11, 14 says, And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. He masquerades. He's a faker. Okay? He's a pretender. Okay? So... He's easy to mask himself. He's, some people call it shape shifting. There's some shapeshifters on this earth and we can go down the conspiracy rabbit hole or, you know, whatever. But just be aware because there are triggers that are going to be masqueraded in front of you. You will never, you might not even know what your triggers are, but there, it, it could all tie to your childhood trauma, trauma that happened within your marriage insecurities um but it masquerades itself and sometimes it comes through people who act like they care about you and maybe they genuinely do but they don't know what they're doing um just be very careful and i say this because the bible speaks so much about how there are just so many scenarios of people that they trusted a person trusted family members and have been destroyed by them betrayed by them people who vowed to never de to deceive what you that person or betray that person even loved ones you know so an example i'm going to skip to this real quick judges um 16 talks about samson and delilah notice how he shared his like secret his weakness um and that was the end of him like delilah did betrayed him in genesis 37 it talks about joseph and his brothers if you want to go to genesis 37 sometime and read that entire story i know a lot of people are familiar with it but actually read it in the bible and it talks about his 12 brothers and how they betrayed him because they were jealous of him being you know the favorite but those are his brothers came to them with a dream that he had talking about, you know, how he believed that one day he, they were, he's going to rule over his brothers and they'll have to bow to him. Don't tell everybody your business. Because let's go ahead and go back to first Peter. I'm sorry. Second Corinthians 11, 14. And no wonder for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. So you might think that you're picking up the phone and saying, I'm so depressed. I'm so isolated. I'm a stay-at-home mom and I just, I blah, 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 blah. And you feel so much better getting off your chest. But the person you are talking to might not be the person for you to unload all of that emotional, mental trauma on or whatever. Like, because... People can't be trusted. You need to find who you can trust. Your spouse, who you are married with, is definitely someone. That person, you are to be equally yoked. 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? So if you, if you're listening to this and you're a woman of faith, I assume that your husband is a woman, a, a, a man of faith. And he is the head of the home. And if you guys are both equally yoked, that is something you release to him. Now, having a con uh, 
an, a totally co opposite conversation is someone who's not equally yoked in regards to that. So you might have more stronger faith in your husband might not, it might still be growing. And we can talk about that another time. That's definitely a process prayers and it can happen where he comes and gives his life to Christ, but to, it might take a little bit of time, but that's a whole different conversation. But your spouse is to be equally yoked with you. He knows you. As Adam knew Eve because he laid with her, our husbands, our spouses are to know us. So that is who you should be speaking to about everything. Your, your God, God, the Lord, that's who you should be speaking to. And then any counsel that you have from anyone in regards to spiritual mental attack, um, in regards to your role as a mother, stay-at-home mother, your children, your husband, needs to come from someone who can feed you spiritually with the right food. I'm talking about somebody who already has kids. I'm sorry. Like, and that's something, this is another reason why my video that I've been working on on depression that is, was supposed to come out months ago, I haven't taken out because there's just one piece of information I did not, I, I said, and I know that some people are not going to accept it, but I'm sorry. Like, this is just something I would say to my, my daughters growing up. Don't take advice from somebody who's not in the same shoes or more than you. I would not take advice on mothering from any women that don't have the same amount or more children than me. I mean, I might be open to what some of their systems when it comes, like, let's say someone has less children, one children or no children, and they have an idea about something I might take into consideration. So if they say, oh, yeah, you know, this would be really cool. This probably would make it easier on you. This or, you know, this organization hack or you or and or they can, and they possibly could feed my soul and uplift me, encourage me. But if and I will accept all of that. But in regards to me going to someone and actually taking to heart what they have to say fully, you have to have three or more kids. Because we cannot relate. And even if you have three or three or more kids, you can like that's just how the conversation goes as far as oh, what's your system for you know doing laundry? With but then oh, the spiritual tact mentally, we cannot talk about that unless you are a Christian. So if you have three or more kids and are Christian and follow God and live a biblical life, then I will open up that conversation and say, so how do you do it, man? My mind is because any other conversation with anyone else would be secular. Just as if I would not take marriage advice from someone who's not married or someone who is not married in a biblically, spiritually sound marriage. And I'm not saying it has to be perfect. I'm just saying, like, what is your foundation? You know what I'm saying? So if you're reaching out to someone in regards to your depression and anxiety, yes, you can find a therapist very much so. And I think you're a therapist, rather, regardless if they're um, secular or not, they can help you kind of like unpack all of your stuff, like your mental trauma, history, anxieties, thoughts and all that and help you organize it through and maybe find ways for you to cope, deal and heal. But as but we there is a spiritual part of us that cannot be ignored. And that's what like, I feel like there's a balance of like physical health, uh, mental, like secular mental systems, and then and, and as well as spiritual. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a balance. Like some people find that they don't get everything from the spiritual end. Like you might go to someone who th does therapy completely based on the Bible 100 percent. But then there's like medicine that's needed and and, and, and things like that. Um, so you know, or physical training that's needed, some kind of physical th therapy that's needed too. So, you know, finding the balance in that and, and not neglecting the spiritual part. So speaking to someone who can give you sound advice. And for example, this leads me to my next conversation. So yeah, so let's, before we start, so don't tell everyone your weakness. And we can talk about that in a separate video because people will act like they are your best friend, sister, mother, whatever. You just got to be careful. If you know you can trust them, so be it. But just be very, very careful because these people, jealousy and all of that runs rampant. And some people are just, I mean, it's not people. We literally wrestle against like um, the spiritual world. Ooh, I'm all over the place. Um, but my friend, I had a really good friend and I was telling her, I was like, you know, 
She's literally someone I know from church. She has three kids. She is married. And, you know, um, we can relate spiritually everything. And I was telling her, I was like, mentally, I'm going through a little rough patch right now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going through a little rough patch right now. And we do that. We'll call each other up and we're there for each other. Um, in regards to our little rough patches because everything is a season right you might have overcome something but as we know it's said in the bible that the enemy will come back and send his little minions over every so often even if you clean house and get all right it, they will come right back and attack so i was talking to her and i was like i'm going through a little rough patch mentally and she's like what's going on and i was like i am having thoughts of like really negative thoughts really down thoughts i'm feeling shame guilt resentment isolation shame and guilt for what she said and i said just shame on who i used to be and the things that i used to do to other people that have hurt me or um i feel embarrassed and i feel regret on how i spoke to people in the past this was before i was saved and, um, you know, when you're younger or shame on who I, I was, uh, how I grew up, like shame that I don't have this yet or, sh you know, shamed. I feel ashamed that I don't have this part of my life figured out. I feel guilty because I don't play with my kids as much as I would like to. You know, you paint this perfect picture in your mind. I don't play with my kids as much as my life. I feel guilty. I don't work out as much as I want to or. You know, and uh, and honestly, like looking from a bird's eye perspective, it's like all of the things that I want to do in my head, it's just too perfect. It's way too perfect. Like a perfect person would be able to wake up at five in the morning and go for a quick run and come back and do that every single day and sit and play two hours with your kids on the floor and then do homework and have a nice fresh cooked meal. It does not work that way. But in my head, I'm feeling these terrible thoughts. And she says to me, girl, those thoughts are not from God. She said, God does not give you those thoughts. He calms you. He gives you love. He, he uplifts you. He comforts you. He forgives you. God has already forgiven you. Why are you doing this to yourself? That is not of God. That's a mental attack from the enemy. And she, what she said literally made so much sense. But I needed to be reminded. It's like a dentist who does the dentist's teeth? He's not going under taking care of his own teeth. He goes to another dentist. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, even if you know these things, you have to get it from someone else too. Second Timothy 1.7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. What happens when you're feeling guilt, shame? Um, you feel, it says timid, but you feel shy. You want to hide, you know, you feel like you're not worthy to be heard or to be seen, not worthy to be loved, but that's not the spirit that God has given us. He has given us power, love, and self-discipline. And the opposite of self-discipline is chaos and not being able to control yourself. And what happens when you feel like you don't control yourself, when you're feeling depressed and anxiety in your mental state of depression? You uncontrollably cry, shout, scream, uncontrollably waste a day doing nothing, laying in bed in depression for more than one day. That's the type of relationship that you need to have with someone in your life when it comes to the mental attacks you know, open up your Bible, read some scripture, watch testimonials of someone on YouTube, find someone that encourages you, find a word, someone speaking a word, a sermon that really speaks to you and save it under favorites under YouTube or Instagram or something so that you can always go back to that folder when you are feeling a mental attack. Speak to your pastor, find someone from church, find a friend that's spiritually led, speak to your spouse. And I know spouse, our spouses might not want to hear it all the time because they operate a little bit different from us. But, you know, um, navigate through that and what your boundaries are, and you know, with that type of um, with your relationship.
because there are boundaries. I feel like we shouldn't be relying on our spouses, our husbands all of the time. They are not God. They are not God. Our spouses, our husbands have their own battles and they have their own priorities and they have their own lives. And just as much as our husbands would come to us and we would be glad to help them if it was constant, 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 like you already have so much on your plate with your children. And so um, I think, you know, a lot of us women tend to rely on our husbands so much that when they kind of emotionally tap out for a bit because there's like, again, with this or whatever, or they just don't have the mental capacity at that time because they're them too are going through stuff mentally as far as how do I provide for my family? What's my next career level? What do I, you know, and they have their own mental attacks too. Men might not be as um, open and talk, talk about it as much, but they have their own mental attacks. We like, we need, like, we are not narcissistic here. So we will not sit here and believe that our world is the most important world. We will consider our husbands, their mental capacity and understand that this is something I'm going to have to pray about and, you know, learn how to have a little self-discipline, you know what I'm saying? And maybe this is not the time I'm going to burden my husband with this at this moment, but we will talk about it in the future. That's the type of relationship that I want for you is to be able to find someone who's spiritually led to speak to you to get you right back on track. Because when you say, aha, that's a mental attack. Okay, well, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I Let me go ahead and do what I need to do. Do some prayer, play some music. Kids, let's pack up the car. Let's get some sun. Let's get some fresh air. Let's go for a walk. And you'll feel better knowing where it came from. Because I think the number one thing, too, is knowing the root of anything. When there is a cancer in one's body, we are looking for the root. Where is it coming from and what is causing it? Because even if you were to find out where it was coming from in a specific location in your body, if you didn't know what was causing it, then it can always come back. But even when it were to come back, you'd know the game plan. For example, raising your children. If my child is acting up and just being unruly, I will literally, you could spank that person and take care of that one symptom for that very moment, but it will come back. You have to look at and, and really like think about where is this behavior coming from? Am I not like giving this child enough individual attention? Am I speaking negatively around them or to them? Like, are they being bullied at school? The, like literally finding the root and when you find the root it's literally like okay let's find a game plan at least I know what it is so when you're having these thoughts you're going to think to yourself I want you to think to yourself what is this trying to teach me what is God trying to teach me and one thing I will say from hearing a lot um you know just Knowing about all the things that we go through in our lives, I never hear one person say, I went through something. Like, I hear a lot of people say, it made me stronger. Um, I'm wiser now. And I don't like that it happened to me, but I have a different perspective on life. And if it wasn't this that happened, that I wouldn't be in this situation or whatever. I'm not saying trauma and everything like that is a good thing, but God teaches us in different ways. So I want you to think to yourself, like, what is this trying, what is this mental warfare trying to teach me? So with Job, if you guys are familiar with Job, he first, uh, Job, I'm sorry, do I already have this pulled up? Job, we all know Job's situation. I want to pull this up. The story of Job. We all know Job's situation. God literally offered him to um, the enemy to to be tried. Satan answered the Lord from roaming around the earth, going back and forth on it. He said, where are you come from? Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Job was looking for someone to, to mess with and... and, and make him go through some stuff and 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 god actually offered him to satan was like how about him he's he's blameless he's stainless try him but you can't hurt him you can't kill him you can't touch him and job literally went through it all 
in that moment where you're going through something, I want you to think to yourself, like, what is God trying to teach me and why, you know? For my example, I went through some emotional trauma growing up and um, it's nothing that was like it, like neat, like my parents never, like, I don't think they ever planned to do these things, but I think that, you know, as you're growing up, you're watching your parents grow up. So there's just some holes in the puzzle that didn't really, that weren't cohesive with child like a person like a child's childhood there's some patchy moments and they kind of have traumatized me I'm not gonna lie and with that being said years later and I'm here I am mother of three wife and in my 30s early 30s and it, I'm still having triggers to that trauma and we will talk about parenting through trauma because it is real. And your trauma might not be the same as someone else's trauma, but trauma is trauma. And there are triggers and you're not taught how to parent through those things. And um, so we'll talk about that. I, in my lifetime, and I know a lot of people might be able to um, relate. You're going to see patterns. You're going to see patterns in your lifetime of things happening multiple times with different people in different seasons, in friendships, and family relationships, at jobs that make you wonder, like, why do I keep going through this? And um, we could talk about generational curses because the Bible talks about that. And that, literally, that's a whole other conversation. And what was I saying about trauma? It could be something that God is trying to teach you through for a purpose. Your purpose is to change and help someone, change someone's heart, help someone, bring them closer to God in some kind of way. Your purpose, God gives us all talents. And I know my purpose is to help the people that have suffered or are suffering or will suffer with the things that I've overcome. So you take that darkness, hurt, trauma, pain, and you change it for good. For example, and I'm going to stop real soon because I'm, I'm approaching um, one hour in a minute. Swimming, swimming lessons. This is a beautiful story. There's a mother here in, in, in Florida. I believe she might be in central Florida. She lost her son. A um, few years back, he was only like about two or three. I believe he was three. He drowned. It wasn't like a regular pool drowning. It's one of those kind of accidents. Like she was visiting a family friend who lived by the water, and she was at their house, and they, you know they had their, her kids and and their kids playing. She was breastfeeding her, um, I think, three month old newborn baby in the other room and her husband was watching the kids and you know it was like 6 p.m. and everyone's like oh where's um Jake his name was Jake where's Jake and they're all looking for him and um you know with kids and everything they just tend to just slip away and they do their own thing and they were looking for him and it got dark outside and they went outside and looked and looked and looked and she was saying um it was very hard for her to look for him because it just there was no lights outside and by the water and they were just screaming and screaming until they finally were able to get on like some jet skis and just look around and, and search and they found his body he drowned and when you see i i can link the pictures on um i can link it somehow um maybe i might not but Maybe I will. Um, when you see his photos and her testimony and her story and everything and his beautiful pictures, you're like, wow, what a beautiful family. And instead of taking it and just like becoming this person that was just always miserable and sad and dark and hurt, and I'm sure she went through a transition phase of mourning, she turned it around and changed the lives of literally 
thousands of children all over the world. She created a foundation called Live Like Jake, where they literally, um, it's a scholarship program for children to learn how to swim. It's a scholarship program for children to learn how, and as we all know, this is not a sponsored video. This is literally a story that I know of. Like, people, swimming lessons are expensive. And a lot of people are not able to do swimming lessons because they can't afford it for their children. And some people might think it's not necessary because they don't have a pool in their backyard. But you could be at an Airbnb and there could be a freak accident and you never know. And the most important thing is a child learning how to swim, float, swim to survive. She created a scholarship in a capitalist world, war, like nation that we live in where everything's about just if you can pay it that's it's yours if you can't pay the three hundred dollars two fifty a week per child then no swim lessons for you she has created a scholarship and it has been able to train children how to swim and survive successfully and i think that is how you take something hard terrible dark and made it good and created a purpose for yourself on this earth for the sake of Christ. And she mentions God on her website. So I'm going to leave, and not, like I said, this video is not sponsored by them at all. I'm going to leave the link because they do accept donations. And this, the donation is small as like $5, $2 to $2,200. It's fine. You literally can donate like $2, $5. But read, this, read her testimony. Notice that she speaks about God in there. And... Um, know that sometimes the stuff that we go through is for a reason even if it's not you making a podcast or a website or a blog it could be you literally sitting at the park one day and one mom coming up to you and being like I, I can't I went through this and you literally that like it is your time to shine it is your time to do God's will and be there for them or even if you went through it because it is God put it as your purpose to break that generational curse so that your youngins that's growing up don't deal with the stuff that's gone happen in your life or happen behind you. Hmm. We don't take a mom class. Like we don't take classes on how to be mothers or parents. We don't take a class that sits us down and says how to heal from your trauma, how not to put it upon your children, how to bounce back from depression, how to realize when you're being mentally attacked, how to eat healthy. Like I feel like we should be taught how to eat healthy. You know what I'm saying? Because what you feed your body is how you're going to feel, how you're going to activate in the home with your children or activate, um, articulate with your children, H how to make a, keep a marriage strong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I hope that children are not listening right now, but sex is very important to your marriage. I will make a whole video on that. Sex is very important. Intimacy is very important. And I am saying this with the most loving heart like because I've went through times and seasons where in the beginning of my marriage like I did not want to do it as much because <laughs> I feel terrible talking about this I feel like I should have prepared you guys for where this conversation was going but I didn't feel like going doing that because I was just so wrapped up in motherhood I was so wrapped up in raising two small baby girls back to back that there was no like sexy carry at all <laughs> There was no like, let's get it going. Like there was none of that at all because I didn't want to be touched. I was literally breastfeeding back to back. Like I was tired and, you know, and not only my feet are going, like they're falling asleep. And not only is it that you don't feel like doing it and you feel like, and you know you have to because biblically you should not keep your body from your spouse, but your spouse sometimes forgets on how to make, you know, invite you to the party because, you know, you get used to each other. You guys are married, so he doesn't have to try as hard. So then you guys have a conversation, and it's literally this thing that you guys have to keep doing and working on, you know, and be open with. And we'll talk about that in a different conversation. But you don't get a class, a how-to on how to be a mother. You're kind of thrown into it unless, you know, you have some experience given to you from your sisters or mothers or family members but you don't get a class on it something that you gotta gotta wade through and um grow through so as your kids are growing they they are literally watching you grow as well i have to wrap this up i'm at one hour hmm. 
find joy in the present. We'll talk about that more in another video, but you got to find joy. You got to work on it. The devil is in the past. The enemy is in the past. We don't want to worry about what happened yesterday or the other day. We take it. We learn from it. We grow from it. We use it for a purpose. But we are not sitting in the past and we are not focused on the future. There, There's a saying that says in the past is depression. In the future, you think you're too much in the future. It's anxiety. You need to be in the present. And I mentally have to pull myself into present into the present moment often it is a mental exercise but by doing so i am pulled into that very moment and i eat immediately when i mentally pull myself into that very moment i have a wave of gratefulness so i will say i think being grateful and and saying your thanks or just reminding yourself this is not gonna last this moment, how sweet they are, like it's not going to last. Um, John 10.10. 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. The thief's job is to steal, kill, and destroy. He is here to steal your joy and your happiness and your purpose of sharing to others, helping others, growing your children, nourishing your children. He's there to steal it. So a lot of mothers are commenting saying, I don't feel like I should do this anymore. I wasn't meant to be a mother. I can't do it. I can't handle it. I can't stay at home with your mother, with my children. You are doing the best job that you can possibly do for your children. He wants to steal that from you and put you back outside of the house. And 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 it's wonderful that a mother is at home. We will talk about that in one second. And he wants to kill your happiness, kill your purpose. Kill the spirit of your children. Kill the moment that you get to have raising them the way you want to in this world that wants to raise them for you. And destroy the happiness and joy in your home. And destroy their future. As a stay-at-home mother, you have definitely have come to the terms with your spouse that it is best for you to be a mother. Why? At, at home, full-time. Why? Because you are protecting your children. They are safe with you. You are teaching your children before the world can teach them their ideals and the world can teach them that it's okay to like watch the things that they watch and be like, there's a purpose behind being a stay at home mom. Okay. And the devil, the enemy does not like small children. It's been said over and over and over in the, in the Bible, how small children were sacrificed and small children were killed, literally killed because of their future that they could bring and the power that they can bring and, you know, who they could become. You know what I'm saying? Like the ch children are despised by the enemy. And here you are humbling yourself, sacrificing yourself to be at home with your kids, to fully protect them. The enemy wants to destroy them. That is why there are people in this world literally doing the most heinous of crimes towards children. That's why there are people that are sexually abusing children, physically abusing children, mentally you see it on the news nonstop. That's a demonic possession. When you see someone who throws a child across the room, there's someone on the, there's a couple right now on the news. It's a terrible situation, strictly demonic. A couple who beat a child. I'm sorry, it's going to get a little explicit right here. I'm sorry. You can look up the store if you want. I will not link it. It is terrible. But a woman who beat her child, like her, let her boyfriend beat her child and he died. And then his, the two other children were left in the house and she left them there with the house. I'm not going to talk anymore about it because it literally is repulsive and it's sad and it's demonic. There's so much more evil in this world. I read something the other night. I literally cried out to Jesus and I asked God to protect these kids and that any of these kids that are going through these things are released from their captors and released because there is some evil going on in this world and that evil is coming from the enemy. Why do they want to do these things to children? You are at home with your children, watching them, protecting them, feeding them, teaching them, loving them, unconditional. Of course you are doing God's will. Of course you would be mentally attacked. Of course you're going to get thoughts saying, you're not good enough. You're not strong enough. You're a terrible mother. You're nothing. You need to be working, making money outside the house so you can be a career woman. See this person on IG? She's sexy. You don't look like her. Everyone's forgotten about you. You're fat. You just stay at home watching TV, doing nothing for your kids. You're lazy. Everyone thinks that you're a loser. Literally, these are thoughts that go through people's heads because 
when you go scrolling on Instagram and Facebook, you're literally seeing all these curvy, curvaceous, super skinny, super glam with makeup. And we are not like our we're still breastfeeding. We still got milk spots. We still got a little like, you know, we didn't we didn't get the tummy tuck. We didn't get the BBL. Our, we have no reason to do our hair during the day unless we're going to the playground. We didn't don't wear makeup. I do not be looking like this all the time. I put on makeup and did my hair today because I'm on camera. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to, the, the devil, but little, you need to know your job is honestly one of the most important job in the world because you are nourishing the seeds of tomorrow. You are nourishing the seeds of tomorrow. Your child might be the next pastor. The next, uh, your child might be a teacher out of all the teachers, one of the very few teachers with a heart, one of the very few professors with a heart, professing their love and helping others to get to know Christ in their career some way, somehow. One of the very few honest realtors or one of the very few honest businessmen or lawyers, your child might be the person with Christ in their heart and when they become a lawyer they will do a job and represent someone just for out of the kindness of their heart because they know the situation is not a good situation instead of only doing jobs that pay money or high amounts and I can talk about that on another I know that might not sound like what are you talking about in detail we could talk about that but basically I am grateful for the people on this earth that have nonprofits that are giving to their communities that are having like scholarships and mentorships for the less um, the word escapes me right now, but those who are uh, less available to obtain those service services or opportunities because of financial issues, it's from the kindness of their heart. And you might be raising a child that will be changing lives. You know what I'm saying? Second Timothy. I'm gonna wrap this up. I promise. I think that was all of yep. Yeah. Find joy in the present. I, I, that was all. That was all of my points. I do have one um, sad story. Well, you know, what? I'm not even gonna say the story in detail. There are there is a story of a mother who who committed suicide. She was a mother of two, and she committed her suicide. She just couldn't handle it anymore. It's on YouTube. You if you wanted to look up the article somehow, but. And I hate to like end off this story like this, this podcast like this, but you know, that's a mental, mental attack. You know, maybe she was having issues with her person. Maybe she was a single mom, but that's a mental attack. And when you are alone, you are mentally attacked. Like I can look up the scripture. I got to wrap this up. When you are alone, you're mentally attacked. Please let us remember when Jesus was in the desert for those 40 days and 40 nights. Fasting and praying, the enemy went to him and tried to persuade him to use his power to, to turn rocks into bread, to jump off the cliff. If, because it says, oh, he's, he, the, the enemy actually quoted scripture to Jesus and said, if you jump off, aren't the angels going to pick you up and lift you? The enemy knows the Bible. He knows, God's, he knows God is real. He said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything you ever want and need. He did all this, directly speaking to Jesus, when Jesus was alone in the desert. Where are you right now? What is the majority of my comments saying? I'm lonely. I'm lonely. I'm isolated because you are at home with your children. Maybe you might have a mom or a grandma here or friendships here. But for the most part in motherhood, it can feel pretty lonely. And in that loneliness, in that time when you're on your island, when you're in the desert, raising your children, doing what's right, going against the grain because it's not, this is not, this is not, this is the path less, less taken. Majority of women are working outside the house along their alongside their spouses. You are taking, you and your spouse are taking the path less taken, taking the path less taken, which is you staying at home. And that is not the norm anymore. That used to be the norm back in the day. That is not the norm. 
Okay, so because you guys are doing that, you being in that desert where children growing them and everything like that, of course, you would be mentally attacked by the enemy as she was. And I feel so sad about her situation. Um, I pray that her children are able to overcome that experience of knowing that their, their mother left them and that they're not tra uh, uh, traumatized, but that they can turn their situation, their story around and, uh, and be thankful that I'm grateful that the mom didn't take them with her. Know that you, when you're allowed or alone, you're going to get those mental attacks, and that's why it's important to create a relationship with your spouse and 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 build a community. And I know it's hard nowadays to make mom friends. I get it, um, but just like all you need is really like two, one or two, maybe three. You don't need a ton. Um, and me, I'm still working on it. I'm piecing together little friendships here and there from church from approaching women at the park i've got like a couple of people that i speak with and get with but um you know in this day and age it just gets kind of weird a little weird as you know you get older meeting new people but especially in this um, environment climate of um, social climate and stuff but at the end of the day you know you have to make the effort and we will talk about that another time so the spiritual warfare and mental attack of the enemy specialized for the stay-at-home mom. This was a lengthy, lengthy talk. I'm at one hour and 16 minutes. But I said everything in my heart. And today I said it with love. <laughs> I know it got a little, a little heated at times, maybe a little controversial. I know probably get some dislike somewhere. But hopefully the message that was meant for that person, the people that were meant to receive it, it, it it's something for them um, and it helps them and it fed them. And I'm glad and happy that everyone who viewed or listened to this pulled up a chair um, to the table today and was able to uh, get a little bit of spiritual food. Um yeah, so I think that's about it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks so much for listening to this uh, uh, podcast and watching the video. I appreciate all of you. If you already are a friend of mine, thank you so much for joining in today's conversation. I love your likes. I love your comments. I love your, you know, your words of encouragement. I'm thankful for it. I thrive off of it. It keeps me going. And um, for those who are new to my channel, I ask you to subscribe, um, hit the notification bell, select all so you can get notifications when I post something new. Um, subscribe to my podcast, give it a comment, you know, whatever, you know, find me on Facebook. I don't know. Just follow me so you know what's going on when I post and leave a comment, say something, say something that's going to be positive and uh, uplifting and edifying for a mom today who needs it. I pray that anybody who is listening to this that is going through something mentally, emotionally, physically, know that you are not alone. I pray that God heals you, takes away your pain, helps you overcome your trauma, and protects you and your family, your spouse, your children, your home, your cars, this, the job that your spouse works at, protects, put a hedge of protection over your family, protects you guys, and keeps you going on the path that you are going in the journey that you're going to raising the most beautiful, loving, kind-hearted, God-guided children, because your family is a blessing. You are your tribe. That is your people. And um, nothing, nothing can tear you guys apart. Nothing should be able. Don't allow the devil to have a foot in your home, in your mind. And what you are building because it is such a beautiful thing all right guys so i'll go ahead and let it go uh, right here bye thanks so much for listening Wait.